a beautiful young woman dies, the probable result of an aggressive exercise and nutritional regimen combined with an undiagnosed genetic disorder of metabolism. Turns out she was consuming protein shakes. Her grieving mother points the finger. Lawyers will undoubtedly crawl out of the woodwork presently. And the media is awash with calls to regulate protein, with frequent citations of the recommended maximum daily protein intake of around 40 to 60 grams for a full-grown adult. We shouldn't be eating more protein than that, they say, and the availability of all these protein supplements on the market is just an invitation to tragedy. More regulation of protein supplements is urgently needed. Because, you know, high protein diets are just so dangerous. No. This will not stand. This will not stand. Stand, you know? This aggression will not stand, man. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan, and welcome back to Graysteel, and the first installment of our TAWNSM series. So, here's what we know. On June 19, 2017, Megan Hefford, a 25-year-old Australian bodybuilder and mother of two, was found ill and unresponsive in her apartment and died two days later. Protein supplements were found in her home, although we don't really know how much protein she was taking. It appears she was training pretty hard and she was engaged in some fairly rigorous dietary manipulations, including protein supplementation, to maintain her physique. Her autopsy lists dietary supplements, not protein shakes in particular, as a contributing cause of death, although we don't know what other kinds of supplements she might have been taking. Okay, so that all sounds kind of alarming. But what seems to get consistently buried in the third or fifth paragraph of every news story about this tragedy is that Megan had an undiagnosed genetic disorder, a urea cycle disorder, which has a profound impact on the proper metabolism of protein and was almost certainly the major contributing cause of her death. To understand that, we have to understand protein as a nutrient and as a metabolite. So what exactly is protein anyway? Well, to a very large extent, you are protein. There is no life without proteins. A protein is just a chain of amino acids arranged in a particular sequence, coded by your DNA. Proteins are fundamental to all living matter on Earth. Our hair and nails are protein. Our skin and muscles are mostly protein. Our hemoglobin and collagen and elastic tissues are protein. Our cell signaling systems are proteins. Most of our hormones are proteins. And our enzymes, the little molecular machines that regulate every single biological process, from cell division to muscle movement to DNA repair, those are all proteins too. In his masterpiece book, The Lives of a Cell, Lewis Thomas said it best, your genes may carry the blueprint, but you are your proteins. When you eat protein, you break it down into its constituent amino acids. These amino acids have, basically speaking, two fates, anabolic and catabolic. They can be oxidized for energy, similar to the way you use carbs and fat for energy, but that's a very catabolic situation, and significant protein oxidation, or burning, is not nearly as important a source of food energy as fats and carbohydrates, except in starvation, near starvation, and wasting disease states. Most of the time, you use amino acids to make your own proteins, enzymes, collagen, signaling molecules, and muscle tissue. So protein is an essential nutrient. But can you eat too much of it? Yeah, sure you can. You can eat too much of anything. But there's good reason to believe that a lot of people, especially women and older people, don't eat enough protein. Protein intake is especially important for the maintenance of muscle mass and particularly in athletes, aging adults, and aging adult athletes. For example, a 2001 statement by the American Heart Association made the claim that individuals who follow high-protein diets are at risk for potential cardiac, renal, bone, and liver abnormalities overall. This prompted the Finnish physiologist Ansi Maninen at the University of Oulu to conduct a review of the literature on this topic, published the same year in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition. Maninen concluded that there was absolutely no scientific basis for such a claim in the biomedical literature. And in fact, the data pointed toward the opposite, 
with indications of improved blood pressure and bone mineral density with higher protein diets. He added that public warnings should be based on a thorough analysis of the scientific literature, not unsubstantiated fears and representations. Those crazy Finns and their ideas, they're wacko. Tons of studies have documented that older adults need protein supplementation well above usually recommended daily allowances to maintain and build muscle mass because of the general anabolic resistance of aging. I've linked to some of these resources in the doobly-doo. Long story short, if you want to hang on to muscle as you age, and you do, then you need a lot more dietary protein than the measly US and Canadian dietary reference intake guidelines of about 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, or about 67 grams for a 185 pound man. And this is not news. As long ago as 1982, a study by Gershevitz et al. in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition indicated that this level of protein intake was just not adequate for men and women over 70. And they weren't even looking at particularly active people, certainly not people engaged in an actual strength and conditioning program. As a strength and conditioning coach, I can tell you that 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, that's just not going to cut it for anybody especially an older adult. A 185-pound man engaged in a properly prescribed strength and conditioning program would, in my opinion, do well to eat more than twice that much protein. Yeah, you heard me. And yes, that's what I do. Now, you may have heard that a high-protein diet will damage your kidneys. This misconception is probably the result of the well-known need for protein restriction in patients with severe kidney disease. But if you have healthy kidneys, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that a high protein diet is bad for you. Some people who eat a diet rich in protein see minor increases in their serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen. These tests are often used as markers of kidney function and such elevations might alarm your physician. But a lot of research has looked at this, and the preponderance of available evidence indicates that in healthy people, high-protein diets combined with exercise pose no risk of renal damage or dysfunction, and the resultant mild bumps in creatinine and blood urea nitrogen merely reflect increased protein turnover. For example, the 2000 study of bodybuilders by Portman and Delalieu showed that renal handling of creatinine, uric acid, and albumin remained normal in the face of high protein intake, and they concluded that dietary intake of up to 2.8 grams per kilogram, or over 1 gram per pound per day, did not impair renal function in trained athletes. A 2005 non-systematic review by Martin et al. in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism found no evidence for renal damage from a high-protein diet, and no evidence for the often cited risk of kidney stones from such a diet. So, there's a lot of published literature and data to debunk the hysterical claims that high-protein diets are somehow poison. And there's also plenty of data showing that insufficient protein intake can actually promote degeneration, especially as we get older. There's a ton of stuff for you to look at down in the doobly-doo. There are medical conditions that force people to be careful with their protein intake. As we've already mentioned, certain forms of advanced kidney disease require protein restriction. And while the details of her training, dietary, and supplement regimens aren't clear, the unfortunate young lady in Australia had an undiagnosed genetic defect in the urea cycle that made a very high protein diet dangerous for her. That's because amino acids are nitrogen-containing compounds. They're basically organic molecules with an ammonia-like structure on one end. If they aren't used for protein synthesis, they require deamination which removes the ammonia-like group so the rest of the molecule can be used for other processes. The ammonia is then excreted. If this pathway is not fully functional, then protein metabolism is deranged, which can lead to all sorts of badness. Inborn urea cycle disorders come in different varieties. Any of the multiple enzymes in the pathway can be affected. Most result in accumulation of ammonia in the blood, which probably doesn't sound good, and it's not. But depending on the type of disorder, other metabolites can also become either depleted or reach toxic levels in the bloodstream. But it bears repeating that these disorders are very rare. If you are an athlete of aging, and especially if you're engaged in a vigorous strength and conditioning program, 
and you should be, then you need a good slug of protein in your diet to overcome the general anabolic resistance of aging that makes it harder for you to increase or even maintain your muscle mass. As for the calls to regulate protein, that's really dumb. I can't even imagine how you would practically go about it unless you decided to reclassify egg whites and whey as controlled substances. And I think the DEA has its hands full already. But you never know with legislators and bureaucrats, and it's best not to give them any big ideas. They have better things to do than embark on a hysterical crusade against a non-issue. I want to extend my sympathies and condolences to the friends and family of Megan Hefford. This beautiful young athlete was using exercise and diet in a pursuit of fitness and excellence, and an unknown genetic disorder made it all go terribly wrong. But this tragedy shouldn't deter the rest of us from eating the healthy amount of protein we need to engage in regular vigorous training to maintain our lean tissue, performance, and health. Using Megan's misfortune to dissuade people, especially aging adults, from eating enough protein to maintain and improve their critically important muscle and bone tissue is misguided, stupid, and dangerous, and would only amplify the tragedy. Thanks for watching this special TAWNSM episode of Gray Steel. Our content is offered for educational and infotainment purposes only and will never be offered as medical advice for any particular person, patient, disease, or condition. If you have questions about your health, you should work closely with your physician. Please check us out on Facebook, our website and blog, and at patreon.com slash graysteel where you can help support this channel and the content we produce. And please don't forget to go to youtube.com slash graysteel and subscribe to our channel. That really helps us out a lot. Until next time, stay strong and stay healthy.